On the Cumberland Coast is the wind scale works of the United Kingdom Atomic Energy Authority. The irradiated fuel from all the reactors of Britain's nuclear power program is sent to Windscale for reprocessing to extract the valuable byproduct plutonium. Since 1955, the irradiated fuel from many other parts of the world has been reprocessed at Windscale. In addition to reprocessing, the authority also offers a worldwide service for the transport of irradiated fuel, whether by road, rail or sea. A shipment from Canada involved a journey of nearly 7,000 miles, including two transatlantic crossings. Under snow-laden skies, the cargo vessel Manchester Exporter berthed in Montreal and discharged her general cargo. Included in the cargo were two empty transport flasks, which had been shipped out from Windscale to bring back irradiated fuel. The authority has a comprehensive organization for the design of flasks to meet the stringent requirements of the International Atomic Energy Agency. For example, one requirement demands that flasks of this type must be strong enough to withstand a drop of 30 feet. These particular flasks are made of mild steel, some 14 inches thick. Each empty flask, weighing 47 tons, was taken by a low loader from Montreal to Chalk River, the site of one of the major installations of the Atomic Energy of Canada Limited. The Trans-Canada Highway in the depth of winter was almost deserted. And for the driver, the 250-mile journey to Chalk River was just another uneventful run. snow-covered countryside was in striking contrast to the warmth and sunshine of Italy, where at the very same time a similar operation was underway to collect fuel from the Italian state electricity supply organization's Latina power station, some 40 miles south of Rome. The transport and reprocessing of fuel from the Latina power station has involved shipping over 60 tons of irradiated fuel to Britain every year since 1964. Loading the transport flasks is carried out in a pond alongside the reactor, where the fuel, uranium metal, sealed in magnesium alloy cans, has been stored for at least 90 days to allow the initially high radioactivity to decay. The handling equipment is designed to load a skip containing two and a half tons of irradiated fuel into the flask by remote control. Radiation checks are made as each loaded flask leaves the pond and the flasks are thoroughly decontaminated and pressure tested before leaving the power station. The transport and reprocessing of the Canadian fuel was arranged by the authority in 1966. On the Ottawa River, some 250 miles upstream from Montreal, is the NPD Heavy Water Moderated Reactor. The 
NPD fuel is uranium dioxide made up into pellets, canned in zirconium alloy tubes and assembled into bundles. After irradiation, a quantity of spent fuel was discharged from the reactor and sent to the Chalk River Nuclear Laboratories 12 miles away. In the storage ponds, the wind-scale transit flasks, cleaned after their journey, were lowered into the water to be loaded with fuel. The fuel, which had been irradiated for up to 10,000 megawatt days per tonne, had been stored in the pond at Chalk River for a minimum of 120 days. No additional handling equipment was necessary for these loading operations. After the lid had been replaced, each flask was sealed, decontaminated and pressure tested before leaving the site. For the first stage of their journey, the flasks travelled by road to the railway at Chalk River, five miles away. the Chalk River station, the existing lifting facilities were suitable for loading the flasks onto a rail wagon. Special base plates had been fitted to the wagon to take the feet of the flasks. Each flask was secured to the wagon by a special tackle which complied with the requirements of the Canadian Atomic Energy Control Board. The irradiated fuel kept the temperature of the flask at about 16 degrees centigrade, but to guard against the risk of brittle fracture of the steel in the sub-zero weather conditions, thermal lagging was erected around each flask. Coupled to the end of an ordinary freight train, the flasks were shipped back to Montreal. On arrival at Montreal, the flasks, with the lagging removed, were loaded onto a harbour pontoon crane. For the return journey, the flasks were shipped by another freighter also on a regular run between Canada and Britain. The fission product heat generated by the fuel was only a few kilowatts, so no additional cooling was required for the voyage. The flasks were treated as general cargo. This 
was the first major shipment of irradiated fuel across the Atlantic. The irradiated fuel on the Latina reactor has to be transported to Britain in a different way. Each loaded flask is secured to the transporter by special tackle in accordance with the Italian regulations and is sent by road to Anzio, the nearest port, 11 miles away. Nettuno is the only town between Latina and Anzio and as the transporter passes through on its regular journeys, the flasks have become a familiar sight, receiving no more than a passing glance. Stream Fisher, a general cargo vessel, was chartered for these shipments and was specially fitted out. In this case, the magnesium alloy in which the fuel is canned reacts with the water in the flask, causing a build-up of pressure through corrosion. To minimize this, the flasks are stowed in refrigerated tanks. Some corrosion does occur, however, and to release the hydrogen gas generated, each flask is coupled to a venting system installed in the ship. Each year, the stream fisher makes six journeys between Italy and Britain. Homeward bound on her last voyage of 1966, she called to pick up a further cargo at Marseille. This time, the fuel was highly enriched uranium from the French Atomic Energy Commission's research reactor, Pegasus. The fuel had been brought by road from the reactor at Cadarache, a few miles inland from Marseille. The authority's extensive experience covers not only the design and handling of flasks, but also a detailed and practical knowledge of the numerous safety regulations that have to be observed to ensure quick, safe and trouble-free shipments. In some cases, no less than 20 national and international organizations have to be consulted. The authority makes all the arrangements relating to the transport of irradiated fuel and deals with numerous complications and technicalities as they arise. Cooling facilities were not necessary for the Pegas fuel and the four flasks were sewed in the forward hold of the stream fisher for their journey to Britain. Lifting facilities at Barrow in Furness, the most convenient port for wind scale, are capable of handling any type of flask. It is here that the stream fisher discharges her cargo for transport by rail to the wind scale reprocessing plant. New types of flasks have become necessary following the use of oxide fuels in power producing reactors. Most of this fuel is made up in pins assembled into clusters and some of these are over 12 feet long. The authority has designed a completely new range of flasks to transport these oxide fuels. The wind scale reprocessing plant has the capacity for handling more than 2,000 tonnes of fuel a year. From the storage ponds, uranium metal fuel is transferred to the decanning cells. 
in these cells, the can and fittings are automatically stripped from the fuel rod. of uranium are then loaded into flasks for transfer to the reprocessing plant. Reprocessing nuclear fuel is not only a very complex procedure, it involves high capital expenditure and a large-scale plant is essential to achieve economic costs. Work is well advanced at wind scale on the construction of a pre-treatment plant for oxide fuel. In this plant, the clusters of stainless steel or zirconium-clad fuel pins are automatically chopped into small pieces. These pieces are then fed to dissolvers for leaching out the uranium and plutonium oxides. The resulting solutions are transferred to the main reprocessing plant, thus maintaining for oxide fuel the economy of large-scale operation. But whatever the type of fuel, the main purpose is to extract the valuable byproduct plutonium by the safest and most efficient method. The transport of irradiated fuel was pioneered by the United Kingdom Atomic Energy Authority. The ease with which these difficult operations are now accomplished is due to the extensive experience which the authority has accumulated over many years. The wind-scale reprocessing plant can offer reactor operators an economic service for the reprocessing of fuel from anywhere in the world. <laughs>